Welcome back to Behind the Box. We have just got back from the 2018 UK Games Expo and uh, we wanted to share with you the experience that we had there since this is our first UK Games Expo that we've ever been to. We were there for three days so we're going to do this across um, three different videos where we'll cover a day for each video and then our final video will go over our final thoughts. Um, if you see us looking down, it's because we've got some notes here to help us along. We didn't want to leave anything out, and we did a lot of things each day. Um, yeah, so do you want to just get us started with Friday and how we spent that morning? I will, yeah. So, uh, as you mentioned, we did three of the days. We didn't do the press day on the Thursday. It didn't really fit into our timetable, so we went on the Friday. We went up and down each day. We drove pretty much back and forth, so mm -hmm. we didn't stay over anything. But the first thing that we wanted to do on the Friday was to go around and just re-meet people that we'd met at Aircom and also sort of learn, not learn, but like meet new people that mm -hmm. we interact with a lot online. Um, we especially wanted to go meet uh, Z Garcia and the Dice Tower guys because we contribute now to Board Game Blender, which is one of the Dice Tower shows run by Z. And so we wanted to go say hi. And yeah, that was lovely. It's always great to see people. So that was kind of our morning on the Friday was just, just re kindling those sort of connections between us and other people yeah. so it was a lot of fun just saying hi yeah. um from there we went to the fog of love booth which was extraordinary there were like these um blue and pink balloons that just were rising all the way up to ceiling and Huge. this is a really tall ceiling yeah. so you could tell where the booth was no matter where you were at in the venue it was pretty exciting or at least in the hall <laughs> kind of exaggerating there <laughs> but we went over to fog of love and um we did a bit of a um a demo it's of kind of it. like the tutorial to the game i think yeah, yeah. And that was super fun. Um, Actual All was there, mm -hmm. uh, John John Perkis, and he said hi. <laughs> we got a <laughs> selfie with him. Yeah, and um, That yeah. was a lot of fun. We should explain, I think, just some of the games, if you're not familiar oh, with right, them. Oh, right, yeah. So Fog of Love is like a role-playing game. It's for two players. And uh, you're sort of playing out a relationship. It's, it's like a simulator. Yeah, it yeah. simulates a relationship. You've each got your own goals and ideas for for what you want to get out of the relationship, and they're sometimes conflicting, yeah. so um, <laughs> it makes for a really interesting game. I really liked it. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was very, very interesting. I'd want to play it more with the game aspect to it. The demo we did, it was just sort of the mechanics of making your character and then getting given some scenarios and choosing what your character would do yeah. as a response, but we didn't really delve into any of the long-term goals for our characters, which I think is where more of the game lies. Yeah, because you can have like secrets and um, Yeah, and so we didn't like really that. experience those things. But I can see that there is something really fun with all of that because what we played was also really fun already. Mm -hmm. So that was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was really interesting. The next thing we did was we brought our own copy of The Mind and we met up with a guy that we've become friends with online called Adam. And he wanted to meet up and play some games. So we played the two of us, Adam and his girlfriend. That was a lot of fun. We did that for about an hour. And then we went over to meet with More Games Please. And we weren't expecting him, but Board Game A Day also was there with uh, More Games Please. These are two Instagram people <laughs> that basically just have really nice Instagram accounts and huge followings on there. Yeah. And we met with them. We were supposed to meet someone else, but unfortunately they weren't able to attend. And so we ended up again playing the mind which wasn't the on the schedule but we were really <laughs> glad we did again it was a lot of fun so we basically did two hours of playing the mind which again just to explain if you're not familiar we're going to do a, a full review on yeah. this game <clears throat> but it's a game where you've got to play cards numbered one through 100 in ascending order across all of you you'll have your own like three of the numbers mm -hmm. But you can't talk. You can't say, oh, I have number seven. And someone goes, oh, good, I've got number eight. Let's play them in that order. <laughs> I might just go, I've got number seven. But does someone else have a number three? And then the guy with eight plays eight. And you go, oh, <laughs> I had seven. So it's a really fascinating experience. Really just very interesting game. I do this because yeah, it's, it's an experience. It is an but experience. Really I, I appreciated being able to play it with different types of groups. Yeah. Because um, we've just played it between us and then with a few of our friends. And mm -hmm. so it was nice to be able to, you know, give it a try with other people as well. I like that a lot. And it's just nice to meet people that we talk to online all the time mm -hmm. as well. So that's really nice. Yeah. Uh, from there, we went over to Escape the Dark Castle, and we played a little demo of that, um, and that was really fun. Mm -hmm. It is on Kickstarter right now, so if you want to check out more information, you certainly can. Um, it's a cooperative 
dice rolling, kind of like a dungeon crawl. Like storytelling. Yeah. yeah, heavy on storytelling. You're just um, prisoners trying to escape from this castle, and um, there's a lot of baddies and things that come out in the deck that you have to sort of overcome. And um, yeah, yeah, it was it was really good, and we bought it, and we're going to review it. Yeah, we so should. So we won't go into too, yeah, <laughs> too we won't much. Yeah, too much detail, but we will say this was the only game that we bought at yeah. the convention, and we weren't planning on buying anything. Mm -hmm. So this really stood out to us. It was very special. Yeah, and so. the folks running the booth were really nice as well. Yeah. Then we went over to Hub Games, and we booked in to play a game called Holding On: The Troubled Life of Billy Kerr. It was the two of us, my brother, and also again more games please. We'll call him Ross. Uh, it was the four of us. We'll call him Ross. Yeah, well, cause that's because it's his <laughs> it's name. It's his name. <laughs> but I just figured going forward, instead of more games, please, we'll just say Ross. So we played um, the four of us. It's a cooperative game where you're all taking on the role of like nurses and hospital staff, mm -hmm. trying to keep this man, Billy Kerr, alive. He's a 60-year-old man. He had a heart attack on an airplane flying from, I guess, Australia to London. And he is close to death but wants to remember his past. Now, we're not going to really talk much about the story mm -hmm. of it because it's very secretive, very unique. and each, We don't want to ruin yeah, anything. Yeah, we don't want to ruin anything or spoil anything, but it was fantastic. Really, really good game. It's going to be coming out at Essen this year. It's got, I think, 10 scenarios, and so you kind of play over and over learning more and more, mm -hmm. kind of like a campaign, more like chapters of a story. Really incredible. Yeah, it was great. You really do feel like you are staff in this hospital yeah. and you're desperately trying to get everything done, but there's not enough of you and you're getting stressed. And when yeah. you're stressed, you can't, you know, do the same things that you would normally do. And uh, yeah, without ruining too much of the game, like it's, it's really good. It's really fun. Yeah. You get stressed both in game as a mm -hmm. mechanic and also out of game. And we should say as of the Friday, <laughs> we were the only group that played it all day where the guy died. Yeah. Everyone we else managed him. to keep him alive. It was just great. Really, really good game. <laughs> it was still fun. Um, right. And then we went over to greater than games, mm -hmm. um, where they were doing a little demo of Sentinels of the Multiverse, um, role-playing game. And that was super fun because this is something that we've been wanting to do. We've been yeah. meaning to actually get a role play playing group together to actually play this role playing game. And so it was fun to sit down for 20 demo. minutes or so and do that demo. And um, yeah, it was it was really basic. It wasn't too overwhelming. Um, I think it was one of those role playing games where um, I think anybody could kind of get into oh, yeah. it. It's not intimidating or anything. Yeah. Um, it's a really nice system. Um, mm -hmm. We have the PDF of the game. So I've read through some of the rules, but not all of it, because I wanted to wait until we were going to be actually playing yeah. it. But yeah, it's a really nice system. It uses three dice. You pick like a quality and a trait, and then your threat level, and these things kind of change as the like the scene progresses. The, yeah. more, the more injured you get, the higher you feel the threat is. So maybe mm -hmm. your dice changes. You've got to start actually stepping up. Or maybe you're someone that doesn't handle the pressure and so your <laughs> dice gets worse. And you roll them and then you usually just take whatever the middle dice is and apply that number to whether or not you succeeded or passed and how well you did. Yeah, really, really easy, really straightforward, a lovely little 20 minute mm -hmm. taster of the game. And it's using the intellectual property that I love. It's my, not just superheroes, but I love Sentinels of the Multiverse. Yeah, it's my favorite do. game. <laughs> I've probably mentioned it so many times on this channel already, but... Yeah, it was fantastic. And um, we actually got to meet Christopher Bedell, who is the designer of Sentinels. And this was the only, like, fanboy -y sort of moment that I had the whole time and probably would see myself having at all in board games. <laughs> and that was meeting him. I got him to sign... Oh, excuse me. I got him to sign a card from the game that is based on his look. So Adam, the artist, and Christopher, they thought it'd be funny to draw themselves as characters in the game. And they did, and they're two villains, and so I got to sign. Unfortunately, Adam wasn't there, so I'll have to wait until another convention to get his signature. But <laughs> that was a really nice experience, really nice moment, just having a chat with him for about ten minutes. Yeah, yeah, that, that was really, pretty really cool. darn cool. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so that was that kind of summed up our day one. Yeah, you know what? Looking at it like that and talking about it feels like not a lot happened, but, <laughs> but that was it, that like was a ten hours day. of 
of stuff. <laughs> a lot of it as well, you got to consider, we were walking around, yeah. looking at tons of different booths, mm-hmm. and, I mean, Holding On took almost two hours. Escape the Dark Castle was like a half an hour thing. Mm. The Mind, we spent two hours doing that. Yeah. And meeting and talking to people, again, you sort of, you know, you're like 15 minutes just having a chat, catching up. And you so. have lunch and different yeah. breaks and things, so... Yeah, it is a full day, even if it doesn't sound like it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we'll uh, go on to video number two now. Uh, so you can take a little break if you want to and then ch- check yeah. back in with us with the day number two. <laughs> so we'll see you then. Bye. Bye. Welcome back to Behind the Box. We just got back. I took too long. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs>